Yeah, uh, I don't have to emphasize the importance of rice. So we are all uh, uh, consuming rice, we, we live on rice. Uh, it's about 25% of irrigated land in our country, about 130 million. And in fact, this slide I made about 10, 15 years back. And in fact, this, this picture I took from a ENAU research station near uh, Osu. I'm forgetting the name. I just want to know you. Yeah, one of those. So maybe you can recognize the name. <laughs> so, um, so we have all these things. We have coconut, we have rice, we have everything. It's, we can't separate. And uh, obviously, rice is susceptible to various stresses, and one of them being chromogenesis. Chromogenesis is not, we will, I'll come back to that later on. Currently, it is not important. Um, uh, there are many other uh, bacteria and fungal diseases of rice. But uh, we will see uh, why I had uh, concentrated on viral diseases that viruses are very simple organisms. They are easy to understand and they are easy to uh, improve. <coughs> one can, one can uh, derive knowledge from them and um, try to improve the problem. <coughs> so, this is a view from uh, of a rice field infected with rice logo. In fact, um, we had collaborated, I had collaborated very uh, widely with Dr. Ravindran, who was here, Dr. Robin, who was a bigger rice breeder. And I think the photograph on the, on the right is, was taken by Dr. Ravindran. I'm not sure, but I think I got this thing from him. So, this virus is a member of the family Polymobile. Polymobility are viruses. There are actually, if you look at the International Committee on Taxonomy of Viruses website, so polymobility has uh, almost 100 species, uh, but most of them uh, belong to the family, uh, sorry, belong to the genus Vietnamites. This one belongs to the genus Tumorovirus, slightly different from Vietnamites. Um, they are basically formed in shape and they have circular double strand. It has the genome material. You have a picture on the left top, which is the electron micrograph. The symptoms are yellowing and stunting in rice. Uh, the disease is caused by RTBD, rice from the basically formed virus, and another virus, rice from no spherical virus, which is uh, totally unrelated. To uh, RTB, which is a member of family Secovi, it's an RNA virus. So it's a very peculiar uh, situation where two unrelated viruses have come together. And uh, some people believe, again, it was not an established fact, some people believe uh, that uh, rice from grow spherical virus is more adapted to rice than rice from grow form virus. Rice from grow form virus may be a decent. Uh, Invader in rice. Maybe it was present in leaves and grasses. So, but currently, these two viral losses are averaged about 10%. <clears throat> and because uh, worldwide, and it is present in South Asia as well as Southeast Asia, the actual losses are billions of US dollars. So, this is the uh, transmission uh, part. So, it is transmitted by an insect known as green leafhopper. We call it GLH. And uh, there are several species, Nephotentics, Virusins, Nephotentics, Incitips, Pygrobictus, Malayanus, and Resilia toxin. All these things, uh, all these insects uh, participate in transmitting both the virus, rice from the spherical as well as the personal form. But if you look at the individual viruses, the RTBV is not transmitted by the insect. But it is transmitted only in the presence of ESV, RTS. So again, it's a peculiar um, collaboration between the two viruses that the insect transmits both the viruses together. And it can transmit the spherical virus, it cannot transmit the rest of the <clears throat> So uh, the spherical virus does not have much symptoms. So some people believe some pathologists, virologists believe that the spherical virus acts as a uh, facilitator for transmission of the virus. The mechanism has not been worked out. 
So people have been trying to find out what is the molecular mechanism by which the spherical virus and the vesiform virus interact with the leaf of the, but that has not been found out in the so as I said, here has to prove mystery form virus with double stranded DNA virus about 8 pb, 8 pbs belongs to the family polymobility. And uh, the central uh, green circle is the double stranded DNA uh, depicted as that. And then you have the transcripts. There is a large orange color transcript, which is uh, more than unit length. And this is a characteristic feature of almost all members of polymobility, including polyflavonic virus, including viruses infecting banana, including viruses infecting sugarcane. There are many. As I said, there are almost 100 species of polymobility viruses, and all of them have a similar type of uh, arrangement. And uh, there are, uh, this transcript is translated into four uh, open reading frames or proteins. So we have open reading frame 1, 2, uh, 3, and 4. E1, uh, ORF3 is quite large. And it has uh, several distinct uh, protein uh, motifs. So the one, uh, one written MB is movement protein, then port protein, then protease, and reverse transcriptase, etc. Et then we have ORF4 whose function again is not very certain, but we have some early indications of it. And uh, the DNA replicates via reverse transcribing the RNA. So these are, and this is again true for all species under polymobile. So these are called para-retroviruses or reverse transcribing viruses. And this D1 and D2 which are shown there, they mark the point at which the uh, tRNA, the cellular tRNA, uh, the initiated tRNA molecule uh, primes the cDNA synthesis on these transcripts. Okay, so uh, Rhizomero disease or Rhizomero vesiform virus is found in Southeast and South Asia. It has not been reported from anywhere in the world. Right. And this has been studied for the last 60 or 70 years. In uh, the 60s, this was studied uh, very uh, uh, intensively in the uh, Philippines. And of course, in DNAU, then in uh, West Bengal, in uh, IRI, in Delhi, various places in uh, Hyderabad, Diana, Hyderabad, in Katak, where the uh, Rice Research Institute is there. So we have currently there are about uh, 16, what is what I have written on the bottom, 16 full length sequences of RTBB in the database. And 10 of them are from Southeast Asia, that orange uh, circle, and uh, 6 of them from South Asia, including our country, which is that brown circle there. Now these two are uh, quite different from each other. So the table gives the percentage identities between South Asian and Southeast Asian isolates of RTBV. This is very really, uh, somewhat surprising because both are nice known of SDFOM virus. Within a particular virus, this much of variation is somewhat unexpected. So these are the ORF, you have the nucleotide uh, percentage and amino acid uh, percentage. So there is a percentage difference. We not difference, the percentage similarity. So, if you see ORF4, it is only 64% similar between the two isolates. They have ORF4, but the sequences are quite different. At the amino acid level, it's only 57% identical. So, um, uh, these become the important uh, when uh, planning any resistance strategy. So, as far as management of rice control disease is concerned, uh, First of all, uh, the best is to work with uh, genetic resistance. So genetic resistance, unfortunately, is, uh, has not been reported against the RTPV. Uh, few against RTPV. So whatever has been reported, if you scan, uh, you know, PubMed and all these uh, databases, you see some reports, but they have not been taken forward. 
But against RTSV, there has been some genetic resistance. And in fact, a uh, few years back, there was even a paper uh, from uh, the Philippines of uh, genome editing uh, in rice using the, one of the resistance gene against uh, RTSV. But against RTBV, there are very few resistance genes in rice. And that is why people feel that it's maybe a recent uh, colonizer of rice. So uh, rice uh, is not, uh, it's not, uh, does not know how to deal with the virus. So in contrast, RTSV is, is there in rice for many, 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 many years or many, many years. So rice has developed some resistance against RTSV, but not against like, RTB. Vector control, of course, is one alternative, but then uh, there are environmental concerns. Transgenic approach is there, which is promising because of success achieved by using both protein demonstrated almost 25, more than 25 years ago, and more recently using RNG infection. So these are some of the uh, you know, so-called uh, transgenic or biotechnology, biotechnology based approaches. Uh, this is a uh, slide showing RNA interference. Now, RNA interference, why I am uh, discussing RNA interference is because the resistance which I will be talking about is based on RNA interference. This slide I took uh, from a publication 2005, which is 19 years back. Uh, and next I will show another slide which I took uh, from a publication in 2005. So what we have is the RNA interference is a natural antiviral defense reaction in plants. It is found in almost all plant study uh, and it is triggered by viruses, viroids or transposable elements in the cell. So it's based on RNA. And so uh, what you have you know, on the left is uh, RNA positive sense RNA viruses. Then you have pararetroviruses, which is part of RTDGs are pararetroviruses. Then you have Gemini viruses, double stranded DNA viruses. All of them can incite RNA interference defense reaction in plants. And the machinery of the defense reaction is more or less conserved across plants, not only plants, but also in insects, in nematodes, across various uh, you know, organisms. So, um, uh, RNAi-based transgenic antiviral resistance has been demonstrated in many crops around the world. In the last 30 years or so, there are several publications where people have used RNA interference-based strategy to develop resistance against various viruses in various crops. Uh, and at least one of them has been even released for, for or field trials, not field trials, but it has been released for cultivation in Brazil in, um, in by resistance against a Gemini virus in bees, common bees. <coughs> uh, and this is a slide I took uh, from a publication last year, Annual Review of Plant Biology. So here again, the same uh, RNAi has been illustrated in more detail. So now we have quite a clear information about the proteins which are uh, in the RNA interference machinery, uh, which protein is interacting with which type of DNA or which type of RNA, how they are thinking about gene silencing or um, antiviral response. All these things are more clear, but most of them is from is in water plants, such as Arabidopsis, Teliana, or Little bit you have already interference is an antiviral strategy in plants. But viruses also have proteins which suppress the antiviral response. So we call it the viral suppressors. So what we feel, or most of the virologists feel, is that viruses have redirected part of the functions of some proteins against the RNA machinery. So it's a classic case of molecular arms race. That means the virus infects and the uh, plant uh, starts the resistance mechanism and then the virus starts the anti-resistance mechanism. So, it, you know, it's a, it's basically a, something like an arms race. 
So what you have is the RNAi machinery indicated in the middle, and those red circles are viral proteins which are working against the RNAi machinery. So you have on the left you have the Gemini virus proteins interacting with uh, adenosine kinase and then affecting the methyl cycle in the DNA virus and the nucleus. Or you have some of the suppressor proteins in CMP, PMP, etc. They are uh, interacting with the small RNAs which are generated by the plant antiviral system. So there is a uh, you know, uh, resistance and cross resistance going on between the plants and the virus. So coming back to RTBV, what are the known functions of the uh, viral protein? So ORF1, we call P24. So it's a protein of molecular weight 24 kilo It participates in particle assembly and interaction with a D1 phospho photosystem protein. So actually, people in uh, DRR, the Hyderabad, uh, they have shown this in a paper about five, six years back that uh, the ORF1 uh, product interacts with the photosynthesis in rice plant, right? And that may lead to the yellowing symptoms which we see upon virus infection. Uh, ORF2, uh, in this the, the protein there interacts with the core protein, helps in the viral scaffolding and in the formation of the viral particles. ORF3 is a multifunctional protein, it has, as I said, movement protein, coat protein, then uh, protease, then reverse transcriptase, etc. And then ORF4 is an RNAi suppressor. So this is a new type of concept uh, again, uh, the RNAi suppressor, which is in, illustrated here. Uh, what is shown on the top is the, uh, uh, the five prime end of the transcript in red. And uh, the transcript there has a strong secondary structure. Uh, so, this is common in most of the transcripts in polymorphism. And uh, this was published in the year 2014. Rajeshwaran et al. I think Rajeshwaran uh, did this, uh, he was the product of Padrai Manga University, Dr. Vedu Tanvi. And then he was then working in USA and this, this thing, was, no, sorry, this was came out from uh, Swiss, Switzerland, land in Switzerland. They showed that this transcript generates, they call it decoy SI RNAs. So, plenty of SI RNAs, small interfering RNAs are generated from there. So, the plant uh, RNAi system gets pulled. So, it sort of tries to uh, uh, destroy the transcript, but because of the secondary structure, the transcript uh, remains uh, un unaffected. But the SI, the RNAi mechanism gets pulled. So that is that is a new strategy uh, uh, started by the virus to fool the RNAi system. So uh, this is this was shown in the Southeast Asian uh, RTBV. Most of the virus, most of this work was done uh, from the RTBV isolated from Philippines. And as I said, the RTBV isolates in our country are quite different. So we asked the question whether the such a suppressor activity is found in the RTBV South Asian group, which we worked in, which we worked. And so I will show you some data which may not be very relevant. This we published uh, last year in 2023 in biology. Uh, one of my students, Madhvi Naresh, what she did was she tried to see whether the Indian RTBV proteins, do they have an RNAi suppressor activity or not? And uh, the usual way to do it is to see uh, uh, RNAi suppression in a tobacco plant. It's not tobacco, it's Nicotiana benthaniana, it's a small type of tobacco plant. And uh, there is a, uh, there is a transgenic Nicotiana benthaniana plant available which uh, expresses the green fluorescent protein. So if you shine ultraviolet light, it appears green. <clears throat> so it's a transgenically expressed protein. Now if you infiltrate uh, a vector with plasmid which has GFP, 
Then the TFP, which is produced in the plant, gets silenced because of RNAi. And then along with that, you can put uh, a uh, RNA suppressor such as CMV2B. If you do that, then you find the green fluorescence coming out again. So you see the green thing. And then if you don't have the suppressor, it becomes red. Red means that uh, the GFP is not expressed. So you have the chlorophyll, which sort of fluoresces in a reddish tinge under ultraviolet light. So you have that in the middle panel, you have the red thing. And then we, we put the various RTPV proteins, one of them, the PRT protease, that also was giving the green color. That means the PRT protease of the Indian RTPV also may have a RNA suppressor function. And then she did some other uh, small RNA experiments, etc. And uh, the GFP expression fold change also shown there. So basically, uh, this sort of experiments indicated that the Indian RTPV, the PRT protein, protease of Indian RTPV, probably acts as an RNA suppressor. So it's a protease. So protease needs the polyprotein of the viral uh, protein. So it also, had, uh, uh, yeah, Madhuri went on to do this. Part of this work was done in, in uh, Sweden. Uh, in the University of Helsinki. So this she checked whether this uh, RTDV TRT interacted with any of the RNAi suppressor proteins. So using EIFC, uh, she she showed that it interacts with SGS3. Now SGS3 is part of the RNA silencing machinery, and she showed that it interacts with SGS3. SGS3 taken from arabidopsis. It interacts with SGS3 taken from potato, right? So, um, unfortunately, she could not see whether this interacts with SGS3 of rice. It did not have that particular load. But um, in this paper, we have speculated that it must be interacting with it's a, it's a virus which infects rice. So, we have information that it interacts with a particular SGS3 from Arabidopsis. SGS3 from potato, but uh, we speculated that it must be interacting with SGS3 of rice as well, and the antiviral spread and the suppressor function may be. Uh, so, again, we come back to the functions of RTBV protein, and finally, we conclude that RTBV has multiple strategies to dampen the RNAi based viral resistance of its host. So, rice is trying to. Uh, uh, rice is trying to start a RNA response against the virus, and the RTBV has multiple strategies to dampen this uh, resistance reaction. Okay, so this is this is more recent work, but initially our anti uh, RNA based uh, RTBV resistance work started about uh, 15 to 16 years back, maybe more, 2007 or 8. We started this work a um, little early in 2005. And uh, we thought that uh, we can use the RNA interference to have some develop some resistance against this virus. So, this is the viral the DNA, uh, and uh, what you have in the bottom is the transgene construct. So, it was a we designed a binary plasmid in which the ORF4 or P46, which is shown there is cloned in a sense and antisense orientation under 35 years promoter. 35 years promoter is a strong constitutive promoter taken from polyflora mosaic virus. And this was, uh, uh, this construct was used to transform rice. Um, okay, so this we published in 2008. So 2008 is about uh, 16 years back. So, uh, and initially, we did this work on a uh, on an aromatic variety, which is easy to transform. And so you have the transgenic and the control plants, non-transgenic, inoculated with the RTBV. Uh, and at 60 days after inoculation, you see that the untransformed uh, plants, normal rice plants, are showing symptoms. 
but the transgenic ones are not showing symptoms, they are showing very mild symptoms. So, uh, with this background, uh, I had, uh, I started having interaction with the Professor Ravindra, who was here at that time. And he floated the idea, we can uh, try to see whether uh, this transgene can be transferred to cultivated rice varieties and see whether uh, this resistance holds in the backcross lines. So an extensive backcross program to diversify the above transgene was carried out in collaboration with the ADO Coimbatore and also uh, with the uh, uh, University in uh, Agricultural University in West Bengal, Vidhan Chandra Krishi Vishwavidya Kalyani. So they selected, the Kalyani people selected two uh, rice varieties adapted to East of India and uh, TNAU, there were three rice varieties adapted to Southern India for that cross program. So uh, the ones uh, selected by TNA were DPT 5204, ASD 16, and CR 1009. And uh, the West Bengal team uh, uh, selected Shatabdi and Kitish. So using the, the uh, transgenic rights which we had, uh, there was a backcross program initiated. And the backcrossing was done at TNA as well as Kalyani. And then the testing was partly done at TNA and partly at Kalyani and partly at the University. So this project carried on till 2015 or 16. <clears throat> so it was funded by the Department of Biotechnology. So this is uh, one, uh, there are many pictures like this, but one of them, this was done at TNA for input. Uh, the main uh, author was uh, Dr. Vadarmati. Uh, I think she is now. Uh, yeah. 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 So uh, she was a PhD student, I think, in the States. So what you see is these backgrounds varieties. So this is ASD 16883, uh, and that is ASD 16594. So the left you have uninoculated backcross lines. The middle you have inoculated backcross line, and the right you have inoculated parental lines by the uh, defockers, right, carrying viruses. And this was BC3F4 plants at 30 days after inoculation. So they actually did a very large screening of many lines and came up with some which were promising. So that is what is the challenge. The, the, the transgene is the same. The transgene is being transferred from the same parent to various uh, you know, varieties, but some of them express the transgene well and show a good resistance, but some of them do not express the transgene well, does not, they do not show good resistance. So this is again uh, some more uh, evaluations, uh, real-time PCR for this virus levels. So you have the background variety from the top, uh, number of viral copies at 10 days after inoculation, after 20 days of inoculation, the orange bar and the 30 days after inoculation, the green bars, the, the viral levels increase and then start falling. And if you compare with the uh, parental lines, uh, you see tendril bar 8. In the parental lines, the, the scale is tendril bar 8, whereas in the backcross lines, the scale is tendril bar 5. So at least a thousand fold decrease in virus levels and under the same conditions. So they found that some of the varieties, which are some of the lines which are listed there were found to be promising for us. And this showed that the viral levels fall 10,000 times uh, because of the resistance RNA based with them. And this was this is more um, this the game was done with the uh, here. And this is the uh, um, uh, the blue lines indicate reduction in pro total chlorophyll content. So you have the very susceptible variety N1 on the right. You have the resistance check Balibao Puti. Balibao Puti is an Indonesian rice variety, which is not really cultivated. It's not a high leader, but somehow it has good resistance against RPD. But unfortunately, the gene has not been mapped. 
So we know that Balimaguri has some resistance gene against RTPV, but we don't know where it is. So unless you have molecular markers, you can't go ahead with that. But just this was used as a resistance check. So you have the the in Balimaguri for the second front line, you have the levels much lower. And then these are the 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 CR1009 check is the susceptible one. We have uh, you see that 84 percent reduction in total monophyl content after viral inoculation. But again, some of the backcross lines like CR1009-10-4 has just 52 percent reduction in chlorophyll levels. The red bars are reduction in plant height, and the green one, most important, is the yield. Right, how many grams of seeds you get per whatever. So you the CR1009 check has two, whereas the CR1009-104 has 3.75. So there was substantial improvement in the performance of these varieties after this this picture I uh, download from. So Dr. Ravindran uh, is on the right, uh, Dr. So the the yes, so that was there in the middle. I was there, and then Dr. Uh, we continued at Penn University because we, are, we are, of course, we were also uh, <clears throat> trying our best to do EFOPR uh, mediated operation, but the maintenance of EFOPR was a problem uh, because then we become very hot in the summer. And <laughs> so we developed an agro inoculation system. <clears throat> to transfer the viral DNA into rice, and this creates an infection. Uh, we also have a YouTube, if you search rice agro inoculation, I think you will get it. It's just a two minute <coughs> video. So you uh, put it, uh, so the construct was made from RTPV. It was a partial dimer construct and the for agro inoculation whether it is uh, double stranded DNA like RTPV or single stranded DNA like Gemini virus you need a partial dimer so this partial dimer we call RTPV inf and we inoculated using this method to rice plants and we we, we started seeing uh, symptoms of RTPV <clears throat> and uh, the DNA was also detectable by PCR so this method of inoculation works so, um, and using this, uh, one of my uh, PhD students, he's finished in 2017. Now he's a, uh, <clears throat> he's a lecturer in uh, UP, Gaurav uh, Kumar. So he did a, a very extensive analysis of some of these backcross lines using agro <clears throat> So this is a susceptible Jekusa Basmati. So uninoculated is there. And then at 24 day after inoculation, Usa Basmati after inoculation using agro inoculation uh, shows stunting. The yellowing was very mild, stunting was quite uh, clear. And also, we, we could detect uh, RTBB accumulation by CRs. Uh, <clears throat> so, these are some of the things with some of the lines which he checked. This was published in 2019, and this one again uh, joined. You have the on the left, you have TN1 uh, agro inoculated uh, initially day 0, day, day 8, day 16, day 24. So you see the uh, stunting compared to uh, mock inoculation and uninoculation. Mock inoculation means agro bacterium without any construct. So you have the same stress of inoculation injury and all that. Uh, uninoculated is nothing. So, <clears throat> and Uttari Mera, as I said, with a resistant variety, it is showing uh, no symptoms at all. Whereas the you have the ASD16 parent on the right panel and the ASD16 1153, which is one of the promising backcross lines. So, uh, you see, even at day 24, the stunting is very mild. In the backcross lines, <clears throat> almost as as much as Uttri Mera. So the resistance level in Uttri Mera has been now recreated in uh, Gaurav's more data. Uh, percentage reduction in height. I don't want to go into too much details. And these are again uh, the backcross line. The AC16 parent 59488 These are the backcross lines. So you see the percent reduction drastically falls, almost like Uttri Mera. 
these the, the right ones are some of the backgrounds lines from Kalyani and uh, the bottom ones are also uh, generated here. <clears throat> So, uh, and more data, all these are published. Uh, so, again, you have all these, these are RTBD levels. So, RTBD levels uh, on the left, you see uh, the ASD 16 at uh, day 24, it reaches almost 10 to the power 6 uh, copies per nanogram. Whereas uh, the sum of the ASD 16, 1153, it reaches only 10 to the power 3. So from 10 to the power 6, it has fallen to 10 to the power 3, the RTPP level. So it's almost a 1,000 fold reduction in viral titers. And um, so this was, uh, so several of the right uh, in red color is the RNAi based resistance against RTPP in the backhouse lights. You see, despite multiple RNAi suppression strategies employed by RTPP to dampen the resistance response. So, uh, ultimately, what we have is the rice plant is trying to defend itself against the virus using RNAi. Virus has a global uh, RNAi suppressor proteins to dampen the resistance. And in the background slides, we have a strengthened RNAi response. So, the uh, strong RNAi response is giving rise to Resistance, despite the virus having several antiviral anti-resistance strategies. Okay, I think uh, this is the last slide. I mean, not the last slide, but concluding slide is that RTBV, the sole species in the genus Tumorovirus. So, according to the ICTV, they, they, they classify viruses, and according to their principles, uh, RTV is the only species in the genus Tomorovirus, whereas in the genus Bagna virus there are more than 80 species. Uh, but although it's the same one species shows two distinct geographic, geographically limited groups. The RTDV in present in Philippines and Malaysia is very different. Uh, at the molecular level, from the RTDV present in our country or in Bangladesh or in Sri Lanka. <clears throat> Although associated with RTSV member of Secovity and the natural condition, it has been possible to have infection with RTBV using agroinoculation. So using agroinoculation, you can perform inoculations in the absence of the leaf hopper. Because in the leaf hopper, you are not sure, you cannot really uh, be sure about the virus. Because leaf hopper has to be fed on a infected rice plant. That which taken from the field can have various other Viruses the various other time. So, using agro inoculation, one can limit the infection. RTBV shows multiple and diverse strategies to dampen the antiviral RNA response in rice. Despite the above, artificial strengthening of RNAi using a transgenic approach results in substantial reduction of RTBV titers and amelioration of symptoms. Symptoms means that stunting is reversed. And um, yield, etc., is also uh, substantially increased. Okay, so finally, as I said, RTBV, the last report from India uh, was in 2010 or 11. After that, there has not been any report on RTBV occurrence in India. One week is good. That uh, you know, the, we, we should be happy that the virus is not there. There are many theories why it has not been reported. Many of our colleagues feel that there has been a lot of insecticide application. So the leaf hopper levels have come down in many parts of India where this was. So the incidence also has come down. Recently, in 2022, there, there was a report of RTBB in Bangladesh. So the area of Bangladesh, which is which was reported to be having uh, RTV in as as recent as 2022, is shown. And once it is uh, there, uh, it is uh, anything can happen. So all this is rice growing well. Uh, Eastern India, Tripura, Assam, uh, West Bengal, everything is rice growing well. And uh, international borders do not need anything for insects. So 
these things can spread. So, um, last 10 years there has been no report of RTD or high slum road in India, but uh, so it has been reported recently in this conversation. In fact, I even interacted with them, uh, the Bangladesh scientists. They did most of the work again in Philippines, but the material they collected from these places, Pomila and um, that place, <coughs> which is adjacent to Tripura. Pomila is hardly 30 kilometers from Agatha. <coughs> So these, these these things can spread. So we have to be vigilant, uh, and um, it's not that the virus has disappeared. It will stop here, and these are the acknowledgments. Uh, uh, Arunima Purnasta, Gaurav Kumar, and uh, they they were my students, and Arunima developed that uh, android inoculation procedure. Uh, Gaurav Kumar did most of the testings of these lacrosse lines, which were uh, developed here. Balamati, of course, was the student here, and she did bulk of the testing here, with her, uh, along with other colleagues. Uh, collaborators, I can't thank enough uh, Dr. Abhindran and Dr. Robin, who were instrumental in this lacrosse program. And Dr. Manopani was also involved. Uh, I'm, I'm not very sure where she is now. Is really the okay. <clears throat> so she was the main reader behind uh, From BCKV, Kalyani, West Bengal, Dr. Sarabda was the PI uh, working after that. Uh, the funding was mainly from uh, DBT, Department uh, of Biotechnology, Government of India. Actually, they, they first funded for the transgenic uh, production of uh, transgenic cells, and then they had. Uh, funding for two uh, consecutive uh, periods, three year, three year period uh, regarding the back crossing. <clears throat> so, I think the total funding we received was for almost nine or ten years on this particular project. So, currently I am uh, at University of Delhi. So, University has provided, uh, I, I retired last year, but they provided a small facility to you know, complete this work on right projects, uh, right papers and all that. And uh, I also get funding from the Indian National Science Academy, which encourages this sort of interaction. So that's why I'm grateful to Dr. Uh, Karthik and uh, organize this. So I wrote to him that I have funding for this sort of visits and interaction and INSA uh, acknowledges this sort of, encourages this sort of interaction young people and so I thank you for attention. Any questions? Yeah, we start from the other. Yeah. I have a question. What is the symptom? Most the symptoms are similar to that of the DNA. And my students say they can't push it out of the DNA. I think in the overall there is no necrosis. Uh, if blight, there is necrosis and drying and that sort of, I mean, generally, the blight, what I have seen, they have did a little bit more than the blight. So, the symptoms spread along the big rip and that sort of thing. And the entire plant dries. Uh, here, there is no necrosis is not there. Mainly, it is yellowing. Yellowing and stunting. Stunting is very, uh, very typical. And yellow, if you read a textbook, your description, they say yellow orange discoloration. And in fact, Rice it's an English name, but in Philippines, they have uh, their own name for it, and that means yellowing of rice. So, in the Filipino language, they have whatever. So, that, that is the name. So, the stunting, stunting. Yeah, stunting is the most uh, characteristic features of this. In fact, uh, most of the field virologists who used to work and they would look at stunting in the field uh, whenever you see plants around where they suspect. There are other ways, right? Grassy spell. Uh, yes. Grassy yes. spell and baggage stunt. Yeah. 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 They, they, were, they were reported from Kerala many years back. Um, and in fact, uh, 2022. Uh, there was a there was a lot of incidents in Punjab in Asmati growing areas, and uh, in fact, I was also involved. They asked me to see whether I detect or no. There was again something and you know, that sort of thing. 
So finally, the IRI Dr. Malanmar and they detected, uh, I think, uh, that it's done by some finger. It is still uncertain, it's not published as yet. Because racket sand and uh, rice walk by this, all these, these things are there in China. It's of, I think it's the uh, brown plant on the But from China, of course, uh, things can spread. But um, one has to be very careful to conclude whether it is uh, rice, uh, rice uh, dwarf virus, rice spike virus, diabetes stunt virus, three, four of them. <coughs> they are totally unrelated to. Pro yeah. virus, the first stock break not observed in the whole of this country. We must work on chief. Subsequently, in the next day, her base became blind. We have uh, seen that the uh, rice dwarf virus, then the ADP 42, very severe and bad. Then, in collaboration with IT, Hyderabad. Since then, we have seen these nice people over here, see the PM. And we have identified some of their Western line. Then we have released a Tumofi varieties. So, we initially, we thought that these are very good. And then later, on, they have a field guide, we have a students, we have PA students, then, then we have identified this uh, bad knowledge, which they are facing. And the uh, true viral content is a uh, very but at the initial that we have a great find that uh, bad. We thought that's very good. Then uh, subsequently we have standards that uh, is a good, uh, very short and uh, very quick method of detection. It is a heavy test. Heavy test. Before uh, sunrise, they have to collect the sample and take the heavy conditions test to grow beef infected with the rice. It is a very quick method of screening. And uh, very easy to identify is a uh, farmer's plant to select the pro uh, plant for things. So, this was initially we have standard. Subsequently, we have the developed molecular markers to identify what are the western slides and uh, system of one. Then, based on this, we have like in the two of three types. Initially, we have used this PM1, is the ID system. And now there is the PM1 during June, July, and September, October. We the severe sickness of more difficult to analyze because the virus, I think, goes into some secondary uh, hosts and all that, weeds and all, so you don't see them. But again, I think the defocker uh, levels increase and then they start coming to the And these two viruses are. Uh, they, they are transmitted together by the department, but again, the actual dynamics are not very clear. As you suggested, sometimes the levels keep changing. So, thank you, sir. Thank you very much for the good lecture today. Uh, uh, based on the rich experience, long experience on Western Europe, concerning the population of vector genes and we reduced. Is there any change in the dream of some? Yeah, we have, uh, there is no, no in fact, uh, exactly the same question uh, uh, I myself was interested in. So, uh, we have not, you see the clones which I discussed, uh, that were, they were all done in 2003, 4, 5, that way, that time. So, uh, this was the sequence. Uh, if you look at the sequence database, initial uh, sequences were done much earlier, 1980s and all. So, Indian and South Asian uh, types. Uh, somehow they don't uh, mix. So, I think uh, Myanmar, Northern Myanmar, there are hills and all. So, that separates uh, geographically, that separates uh, Bangladesh, India from. You know, southern part, Malaysia, Philippines, but then again, uh, the refocus, um, uh, there's a lot of work done on refocus migration uh, from Adiani, uh, Professor Mukhobar there or there, so they have, and also in Philippines, they say that between two islands, the refocus can uh, fly uh, several kilometers, so this is again, if refocus fly, then they can fly. It's very complicated. It's not just uh, plant pathology, but also you know vector behavior and so many things. So it needs a very uh, 
combining the two to understand. Thank you. Thank you for your nice presentation, sir. Actually, the Vajna virus, actually, when you know, again, rice and the uh, uh, Vajna system, the Vajna yeah. virus incident is more, there was a literature report. But in your statement, it is uh, last 10 years, we also judged that uh, there is no RTV incidents. But the BSV incidents is. Uh, Another sweet virus, uh, that's a complication is that uh, some of the banana streak viruses integrate in the banana genome. Exactly. Uh, exactly. That does not happen with RTBB. Interesting, that is another issue with uh, polymobility, almost polymobility. In, uh, there was a paper from a group in Japan who were looking for RTBB type viruses in the rice genome and they found some. They found uh, small, small bits of RTDV integrated in the rice genome. But they were so small, RTDV, as I said, is 8 kg. Those small pieces were 100 base pair, 200 base pair, 300 base pair. So they, they, were, they will never uh, create a virus from the genome. But banana sleep virus integrates as a solid thing in the banana genome. So, uh, and whenever there is, there are hundreds of uh, companies which are doing banana tissue culture or micro propagation. If the tissue culture apparently, the process of tissue culture uh, stigates the integrated, you know, so the mother plant can be symptom free, but when you do a tissue culture from the mother plant, the virus is captivated. That may be one reason. But otherwise, uh, Vatna virus, the banana string virus and all these things that can be spread by uh, Asian and all that. So, I don't know. The, I sorry, Neely bugs. Sorry, Neely bugs. And Neely bugs are again very difficult insects to study. Uh, they, uh, they, they stick to the thing and uh, so I don't know. I'm not an insect specialist, but I think there's very little information available about Neely bug behavior. So, it, it could be many reasons. The integrated uh, sequences of this, probably, I mean, yeah, sugar cane also. There are incidents of Vata uh, like in And also in uh, yams, the, yeah. you know, the root crops, amorphophyllus and all that. But there also, there is a lot of Vata uh, like <clears throat> And of course, we have in the spices. Uh, in, uh, and all that. Uh -huh. So there's no. These are typically Vatna virus are typically tropical virus. But I'm coming in first day. So for the past decade, we could not be able to see the incidence of RT. Even for our classes, we could not be able to get the specimen from this surrounding area. So we are showing the slides and teaching the students. What is the situation here? And uh, is there any relationship between the climate change and uh, incidents of RTV? So, when you said uh, that the better population is uh, day by day decreases. So, simultaneously, due to the climate change, is there any uh, changes in the post mechanism? Because you told that uh, they can produce uh, um, RNA high, the protein production. Is there any study like that, sir, in, in correlation to the yeah, that's also an interesting possibility. Generally, people feel that the RNAi is uh, more severe in lower temperatures. Higher temperatures, the RNAi is not very really active. That's what people feel. But again, it's a very general statement. So it can be uh, most of the RNAi work is done in Arabidopsis or tomato and also those are. So, the generally temperate types of crops. In rice, RNAi work is very limited. But again, it's very hard.